Okay, first up, the coming soon, this is our CircuitPython 9 poster. We have a new poster vendor. Um, we were using a poster company and they didn't like that we weren't using them for every single one of our packaging needs and goods and told us to buzz off. So it took, us a, it took me a while to find another poster vendor. So we should have these in stock soon. Um, well, art by Bruce. Yeah. So, so. You know, you can connect HID devices and displays and we've got USB host. Um, so some cool stuff. Yeah. In okay. This. Next up. Next up, we've got a whole uh, gaggle. A bunch of these. Power supplies, different uh, configurations. The reason I like these power supplies, like we, we already stocked five volt. Uh, five amp power supplies from the Raspberry Pi Foundation and three amp for their Pi fours and Pi fives. They don't have this cool switch built in, and the switch was kind of like not only is it a switching power supply, but it's a switchable switching power supply. So these are all five volt output, and some are three amps and some yeah. are four amps. The four amp one is going to be a little bit more expensive. It's also a little bit bigger, uh, but these are great for use with your Raspberry Pi four, which has a USB C connector. You could also use them with the Pi five. Um, the three or four amp one will work just fine. Um, I'll say if you're using like all of the possible ports and they're one amp each and you've got like multiple displays and, and um, disk drives connected over USB, you might need five amps. But like 95% of people do not need a full five volt, five amp power supply. Three amp or four amp will be fine. Um, and again, that switch is pretty cool because you can now like really cut power to your entire setup. Does the switch cut the mains? Um, well, there's no mains power. The mains power is is in the transformer in in the brick, and then the switch is for the five volts that comes out of the USB port. Yeah, a switch for that would be like on the block. Yeah, that'd be on the block. This, I mean, the but it's a switching power supply. If there's no load. It's not going to use any current. So it's not like old style, um, where you know the current would still be going through a transformer. There's no. It, it's it's smart. So it's not going to be drawing power even. Um, even if your power, the switch is turned off on the five volt side. Okay, cool. Yeah, and make sure you look at the product page documentation. Yes, there's a couple ones. There's like a vertical style, a horizontal yeah. style, and a high volt, a high current. This is four amp, and those are three amp. Okay, next up. Next up, uh, by request from JP, we have these silicone coated wires in different colors. We've got like the pack of like red, black, you know, orange green blue or whatever but he's like or white and he's like i want more cool colors so this is extension cables about six inches long um and they come in a, in a bunch of different colors you get 30 so i think it's like five wires in six different colors okay and then the start of the show tonight besides you lady ada our community our customers our entire team at adafruit that makes things go and all the folks that are totally into sharing and making the world a better place through science, technology, and engineering, and more. That's what the M in STEM stands for, more. More. Uh, this is a new featherway um, by request, but also I thought it would be a fun build. It's a capacitive touch, 3.5 inch diagonal feather wing with lots of pixels. This is the, basically the biggest display you can get with the SPI interface. Um, I misspelled capacitive somehow. I think I was working on this really late at night. Uh, we'll fix that in post um next board but you know you could order now and get the version with the typo <laughs> and it might be worth more in the future like the yeah. miss strike on uh on a stamp uh so this is a feather weight which means you can plug a feather into it so let's go to the overhead i'll show a demo so this is my prototype so it's green and also has the typo i didn't catch it in the beginning um but otherwise it's the same hardware and you can plug in any feather into it i will say that the best feathers to use because it is a big display are ones that have a fast spi port so the rp2040 the esp32 the m4s you could use this with the 8266 and the m0s and the 328 and the 324 but it's going to be a little tougher um you're not going to get as high speeds it's going to be slower updates um, definitely the esp32s are going to be fast rp2040 is not too bad either uh, so you plug in the feather, you get a STEM IQT port, um, this nice on-off switch. You can see that the backlight just turned on, turned back off. Backlight driver, and then um, it communicates over I2C for the touchscreen and SPI for um, the uh, display itself. Turn this so you can see Adabot in all his glory. Um, so this is the display and it's, uh, displaying over the micro SD card. So there's a micro SD card slot over here. 
And the capacitive touch is multi-touch. So there's five uh, touch points available. So you can see as I put four fingers on, I can track each point individually. Um, I guess I can use five fingers, but that's kind of clumsy if you use your thumb. Um, uh, so you can have an IRQ line on the uh, capacitive touch to make it pretty fast. Um, it uses the FT5336. And then the display itself is an HX5336. Uh, 79D. I, can't remember. I can never remember the numbers, but it starts with HX. And we've got um, drivers for that uh, for Arduino and CircuitPython. And that's our new product. Thank you, Aaron. With that is the new products of the week.